Okay, my talk will be about um, some general issue uh, about how uh, a general theory of uh, grammar should be set up and organized, and it's related to a paper that Jackendorf published in Language two years ago, and <coughs> the, the talk will be structured as follows. So I will first give some of the arguments that uh, Jackendorf gave, discuss it very briefly, then uh, uh, go on to discuss minimalist uh, theories of move and merge, and then draw some conclusions. So. Um, Jackendorf in his paper argued that we need uh, our theories have to account for certain phrasal constructions. So uh, this is uh, an example of this uh, the student after student construction. So we have, where we have um, strange things going on, like uh, a bare noun combined with a preposition and uh, another bare noun that has to have the same form and the result is an NP or an adverbal phrase. So that's really strange for all, uh, well, probably for categorical grammar as well, uh, for all head-oriented uh, theories. Um, another example he discusses is uh, the one in B, the bus rumbled around the corner. So here he says, okay, we have a certain tree phrase structure configuration, B and PP, and when these things to occur together, then we have a certain meaning. And I, well, and probably most of uh, you in, in the room here, uh, disagree on his analysis. I will not uh, repeat the arguments against this in this talk, since they uh, are published somewhere, but I give you a new uh, argument against these uh, phrasal constructions. Um, as for for this construction, I, I believe that is a real example uh, that shows that we need phrasal constructions in, in our theory. Um, there is a minimalist analysis of this by Gerion Müller, but if one looks really carefully uh, at what he did, one realizes that this is an instance of what Jackendorf already discussed in his paper and said you shouldn't do it, right? So it's, well, okay, I will not comment any further on this. Okay. Um, what I want to show you now is a, a new argument. Uh, Goldberg uh, says that the datives, uh, benefactive datives, are uh, introduced phrasally, so they are not introduced lexically as one would do it in HPSG. But um, so, for instance, if you have uh, the verb bake, uh, he bakes a cake. Um, it's, a, it's a transitive verb, and then you can say he baked her a cake. Um, <clears throat> so you have a ditransitive use of this example. And the interesting thing is that we have coordinations like uh, this. Um, ich habe ihr jetzt diese Ladung Muffins mit den Herzchen drauf gebacken und gegeben. So here you have a coordination of two verbs, right? Gebacken and gegeben. And you have uh, the subject, the here, dative, and uh, the object. And um, the, the verbs, this is a lexical coordination. And um, the, the arguments are shared by both verbs. So that's uh, something uh, I don't know how to explain if, if you believe uh, that, that this argument here is introduced by a phrasal configuration. So uh, uh, that cannot be accounted for in, in a Goldbergian analysis, I think. So this means that we have to stick to the lexical analyses. Um, so if, if we... Uh, assume such a lexical analysis, then um, we have to have other means of combining this stuff, the stuff, the lexical elements with their arguments, and this means that we have to have some abstract constructions or abstract schemata that do the combination. So this is one crucial point in the discussion, uh, construction grammar versus uh, head-driven phrase structure grammar or lexicalist uh, approaches in general. So. What I will discuss in the next part is uh, move and merge. These are two abstract schemata that are used in the minimalist program. And uh, I will show that they're very similar to what is done in HPSG. Uh, namely, I will show that uh, the <coughs> HPSG uh, schemata are the well-behaved cousins or rather parents of uh, move and merge. Okay, so... Um, 
we, in, the, in the next part, I want to discuss uh, Chomsky's theory of uh, labeling. Chomsky um, argued that we have to get rid of X-bar theory because it's uh, too much to assume uh, uh, to be in UG, and he tries to decouple things and make things simple uh, in general. So the first thing he did is uh, this uh, labeling, and um, the idea about labeling is that he says, okay, we have two objects, alpha and beta, and if we combine them, we get this set of these uh, two objects, and uh, that has to have a label, and the label is basically the category of uh, the resulting object. So in former times, we had egg bar theory, we had a head, and then we had a, a resulting tree where we knew which, which element um, contributed the category. But he wants to take this apart, and um, well, we have uh, a further assumption that all constituents are headed. Um, so the category that is uh, um, assigned to this combination has to be one of those, right? If you combine alpha and beta, one of these has to be the head, um, and one has, has to be has to provide the label. Okay, and then the following rules are uh, written down by him. If we, have, if we combine H with alpha and H is a lexical item, then uh, H is the label. Or if we uh, internally merge alpha to beta, then uh, the label of beta is the label of alpha and beta. So what this means is if we have a, like a complex object, we take something out of this object and uh, internally merge it, extract it basically, then the category of the whole thing is the category of the thing where we took something out. Like, if, if you have a CP and extract something, then you get a CP. So, as Chomsky notes, um, this, uh, the label is not uniquely <coughs> determined in all cases. Actually, in this paper, there are two cases missing. Um, he, he just ignored half of the logical possibilities, and, uh, but I will not talk about this due to lack of time. So, he says, okay, this doesn't uh, uniquely determine all cases and think it is a good uh, thing because he uses this to account uh, for so-called free relative clauses. So um, the, the case where it's not uniquely determined is the one when, that we have here. So if, the, um, if we internally merge a lexical item with a non-lexical item beta, we can apply both of these uh, clauses. So in the first case, the label is alpha because uh, alpha is lexical. And in the second case, uh, the label is beta because we have extracted something or something else. And what we get for free from this approach is the treatment of free relative clauses. So the, what you see here is such a structure. So what you wrote, the object here is extracted to the initial position, and um, if we apply uh, this clause, right, we extracted it out of the CP, then the whole thing is a CP, that's the first uh, case, uh, the interrogative case, and if we apply this clause, then uh, the label is determined by this lexical element, and uh, the whole thing is a DP, the free relative clause case. Okay, so this uh, is interesting. Chomsky follows uh, Donati, the suggestion by Donati. And uh, the problem is that it fails on uh, more complex cases. So there's a paper by Bresnan and Grimshaw from 78, where she has this uh, example, I read whichever book you give me. Uh, there are German examples, uh, you can begin mit wem ihr wollt, dessen Birne noch halbwegs in der Fassung steckt, pflegt solcherlei Erloschene zu meiden dessen Schuhe danach besprenkelt sind, hat keinen Baum gefunden und war nicht zu einem Bogen in der Lage. I see some of you understand German. Okay, uh, so the, these things are problematic because this is a complex phrase, right? And the, the account doesn't uh, work for this. Um, there's another paper by Ott uh, who accounts for this data in a way that is not satisfying, but uh, he notes in a footnote that his account does not work for so-called non-matching free relative clauses. So, um, and, and this is a fundamental thing, right? So this labeling stuff is not just 
uh, playing around, so uh, you, you need it for all structures. So what I suggest is that we uh, ignore this because it doesn't work, return to, to uh, an analysis of free relatives that was suggested in the 80s by Cross uh, and Van Rimsteig in the G GP framework and assume a head functor based computation of labels um, as it does, is done in categorical grammar or in HPSG or in stabilized uh, minimalist grammars. So this is the next part. Well, okay, th there will be a very sh brief part. Uh, Chomsky tries also to get rid of uh, specifiers and complements. So he said, first merged items are complements and later merged items are specifiers. There are several problems with this view. Uh, one is that uh, it's not straightforward to account for intransitive verbs. So the solution was to assume an empty element for all intransitive verbs. Uh, so all, all, well, okay, yeah. <laughs> and and there, there are problems with coordination of lexical elements, coordination of head, in head final languages. Um, you can read about this if you want in the paper that is uh, connected to this. So the, the last part of the talk will be about uh, minimalist grammars in three minutes. Okay, cool. Um, so Stabler is very close to minimalist approaches, but much more precise. And um, he implemented a, a theory of uh, remnant movement, as it was suggested by Kane. And what he, he is a, makes a little bit different assumption than, than Chomsky. He has ordered pairs, uh, and uh, he has little pointers that point to the head. So this is the head, this is a complement. This is the specifier, this is the, the part of the tree that contains the head. Um, so, okay. Um, this is his definition of external merge. Um, this thing is a selector feature. Um, he says, okay, if the node has, has exactly one element, then um, the, the complement goes to the right, but otherwise it goes to the left. It's the argument, so it's a specifier. Then this is uh, exter uh, internal merge. Here is a um, fe uh, feature that has to be checked. Here is a tree with the same feature that's replaced by epsilon. Uh, this is the thing that is extracted and um, moved to the left. Okay. The uh, uh, Stabler's approach has basically the same problems as uh, Chomsky's approach, but uh, except the labeling, so he did it with a pointer. But there is a way out of this, so this was also suggested by Stabler, that these are directional minimalist grammars, and here's what he does. So this is a selection feature, and if it is equal x, then the argument goes to the left, and if it is x equal, then the argument goes to the right. Um, so the, this approach doesn't have any of the problems that Chomsky's approach has. Um, but it is basically forward and backward application as we had it in categorical grammar uh, or the head complement schema and head specifier schema that we have in HPSG. Okay, um, one minute, two minutes. Um, so this is uh, very briefly uh, discussing these notions with the arrows. Basically what this is, is um, what we also do in HPSG, it's a pointer to the head, right? Um, so this is the head feature principle, you're probably all familiar with this, and uh, this is the notation that Günzberg und Sachs suggested. We have a head daughter that points to one of the daughters, and this is what Stabler does. So he has this configuration and points to one of the uh, daughters. Uh, to the first one, here we point to the second one, so this is technically uh, a <coughs> Okay. Okay. Um, Stabler's internal merge is basically the head filler schema. Um, Stabler does not define the category of, of the mother in his schema, but if we look at Chomsky's work, we see that he says, okay, except everything except external merge uh, operates on the phase level. Chomsky says that CP and VP are phases. So uh, this, what, what Pollett and Sachs say is that this is a finite VP. And what Chomsky says in the CP, so that's uh, the equivalent in, in, the both, in both of these series. Okay, so the definitions are very similar. Um, you can ask me about the differences in the question period, which is over by now, I guess. Uh, okay, so the conclusion um, of, on merge is that they are well-behaved and well-formalized definitions 
uh, of merge. So they are constraint based. This is one thing that uh, Jackendorf required or requested in his uh, discussion note. And um, they are around for 25 years now, external merge even for 76 years. Okay. Um, so the desiderata for linguistic series are as follows. They should be constraint based. There should be a strong lexical orientation and uh, parallel or sign-based architectures to get, uh, account for psycholinguistic uh, results from studying you know, the, the parsing of human, uh, human parsing. Okay. Uh, and it should not be restricted to headed configurations as uh, Jackendorf and others have shown. Okay. Um, I, maybe I skip this and come to the uh, to the last slide. So, to celebrate Ivan and uh, f finish the conclusion, Ivan participated in the development of several theories, uh, GPSG, HPSG, construction grammar, and as we now learned, also minimalism. <laughs> <laughs> So, lurking in the background of this, uh, these ideas is the question of the is mildly context sensitive of, uh, of, of the right space to be in for the generative capacity of the grammatical framework that you want. So, is that <laughs> <laughs> that's totally unrelated to to everything I've said. Right? <laughs> well, yes and no. Right? I mean, like minimalist grammars, minimalist grammars and, cat and and the categorical grammars that. I mean, many classic classes, like common very categorical grammar, right? Oh, are, cool. I, I mean, those, no, are, those are both, I, told, I mean, those don't work if you don't think we're in that space. I told Emily about my 10,000 slides I sent <laughs> by email from the airport today. This is a quote by a product on, you know, context freeness and restrictiveness of uh, some living. And um, I think 
that nothing we should care about. So the, the formalism shouldn't restrict the, its oral theories. So this is, this is the, the, the quote from your 96 paper. The physicist required the formalism to constrain the theory. Professor Einstein, I'm afraid we can't accept this manuscript of yours on general relativity. relativity. Why? Are the equations wrong? No, but we noticed that your differential equations were expressed in the first order language of set theory. This is a totally unconstrained formalism. Why? You could have written any set of differential equations. So um, the, the point is that the theory uh, constrains what, what the grammar can, does, can do. And uh, I, had, I did experiments with uh, different grammars of German that had a different you know, complexity. And um, the, the worst thing got the better results, right? And I also, if you talk to tag people that have a really nice, uh, well-behaved formalism, they have terribly slow parsers, right? So because the grammar constant is really high, really huge, so, so these results don't mean anything, at least not to me. I think we can cut it off there. Thank you.